Further Japanese attacks on the British-occupied territories failed to reverse the momentum of the invaders. But they did cost the British Empire plenty of lives. Now though, they were not just reliant on troops from other dominions. Japanese troops were increasingly seen filling out British formations. The men conscripted into serving the empire proved to be quick learners, and with superior equipment and training to Japanese regulars, they offered a near-unlimited supply of reliable soldiers, and an easy-to-convince audience for British propaganda. Such units were present when George Hook formed up in Yanagawa to exact revenge on the Harado clan. That's a surplus that would drive any shareholder wild. We really have all that money to spare. The Crown budgeted for a larger affair than the Major General wishes to go in for, sir. Yes, yes, and yet I suspect it was he who insisted the budget be so high. Have you heard the rumours about the business going on in the towns, Captain? Keeping my head above the waterline there, sir. The rumour's a dangerous creature for a provincial type, you know. Oh, wise, wise. Well, I'm afraid you must know by account of your profession. The word is that a lot of the army money is being put into native business ventures, all of them, through one trading name or another, being tied to the Alcock family. He's decided to be his own little India company. Her Majesty wouldn't like to hear that, would she, sir? No. However, I'd actually rather she didn't. Making a laughing stock of this war will not benefit you or I, Captain. If we're to have any profit for ourselves, we must at least be considered to have waged war seriously. I see your line of reasoning there, sir. True enough, isn't it? Best keep our heads down and our sniffers open for any capital falling by the wayside. All this money, and yet we've barely got enough men here for Henry VI Part One. Hello there, and welcome back to Honourable Gentlemen. We're just starting our battle with the Harado, and we're under pressure on our right wing, as enemy cavalry keep charging our conscripted Japanese troops and making it through our stakes. We're coming in at an angle, so we're taking losses there. Meanwhile, across the rest of the front line, we're seeing a less severe attack, but still seeing enemy units get to our front line and begin engaging us in melee. Here, some of those dreaded Tetsubo ninjas are advancing. They're advancing against our conscripts on our far left. Luckily, we're gunning a few of them down. That'll make life a bit easier, but still loads them get to the front line. Now, though, something strange happens. Our conscripts absolutely annihilate these guys in melee. They just cut them down with no mercy. Not really sure why, but conscripts do appear to actually be very good at just about everything. And they're cheaper than regular line infantry as well. So that's good to know. We'll have to keep testing that out. The rest of the battle is descending into a lot of melees, which isn't what we want to see. Having these samurai fight our guys just across the front line is going to be very bad, but where they have levied troops, we're able to break through since the enemy can rout, and the enemy are also, for some reason, marching their ranged units into melee as well, so the whole fight is just becoming a brawl. There was a gap in the line through which I charged out with George Hook to annihilate some levies at the back here. That was successful, although he did take a losses during that charge. Elsewhere, other cavalry are driving the enemy back and locking enemy units down in melee to stop them shooting. Here looks like our infantry are on the verge of defeat somewhere near the center as the enemy's ranged units slowly grind us down with their melee attacks. But we've got more cav coming in and the amount of losses taken on the enemy side are starting to just chain route them in general. So the battle suddenly ends before any more damage can be done. A decisive victory, but a very messy one indeed. Although we did completely defeat the enemy force, that means we'll actually take their castle and get replenishment this turn, so that'll make things a bit better. Now as we start the next turn, we need to take a look at this Sacho force. We saw it in the previous episode, marching into our territory. This is the one that Joss was trying to anticipate the moves of. We were going to go to the eastern portion of the island, thinking they might be moving over there. But actually, we're going to have to bring him back to defend over here. And that's going to be fine. We can make it. And with a little shuffling around of the units here, we'll have our nearby castle fully garrisoned. 
far away, Charles is on the advance. He needs to take advantage of the fact that we destroyed the Matsue in the previous episode, we destroyed their invading armies that is. So now we want to take at least one castle from them before they start rebuilding themselves. And looks like that is going to happen, we just have loads of levies here so we will auto resolve them away and move on in. This is a particularly nice castle to take because it has lots of military training facilities so we can replenish quickly and even start recomposing the army to have better units if we can. So now he'll just wait and see if the enemy have any response to his move. Meanwhile, his father is having to go back from the front line because the enemy troops here, the Matsuyama, have actually walked past our recent capture, Bingo, on the front line. So we're having to abandon that front line position temporarily to kill some of these guys. We defeat one of the two small armies easily with an auto resolve. The other one was out of reinforcement range, unfortunately, so we couldn't deal with it in this same battle. And actually, I don't want to go after that army because I don't think it's going to do much damage, it doesn't have enough units to take anything. And we do need to take our main force back east in case some of the bigger armies around the place make a move. So we'll just be defensive and watch what that smaller army does for now. Time to move into the next turn. First it's the Sacho's turn to go and they do attack Joss in his newly prepared position. So here we go, a similar battle to what we've seen before. Only this time Joss isn't facing tons of melee units. It's a regular line battle composed army that isn't especially suitable for a castle assault. And we do have lots of elite units on our side as well, so things should go a little bit smoother. Ah, uh, now you've all heard what happened here. Some of you even saw it, like I did. Well, if you were thinking of dying today, then I've got bad news for you, boys. All the best grave spots are already bloody taken. Lucky for you, this time we're going to swab the decks with those japs. Listen up then, because this is how it's going to go. They'll try to shoot at us a few times, sneeze, and drop their cartridges in the moat. And then they'll get tribal on us and come up with the shanks fixed. Here's the plan. Don't get bloody shanked. When they're up close, come back in and leave them standing out there stalkers waiting for the Lord's judgment. Kill enough, and the corpses will stop the rest being able to get in. Now that's army engineering for you. The Sacho advance on our fortified position then, losing several units on the way in to our heavy fire from our elite troops. And I've also got our cavalry outside the castle, looking for isolated enemy units right from the start of the battle and one by one taking them out to take pressure off of the fort itself and that's been very successful so far. The combination of the cavalry attacks and our superior gunnery from the walls will allow us to clear up the northern side of the map okay, but the enemy have their reinforcements coming from the south, so this huge wave of troops won't be so easily repulsed. They're certainly going to get inside, and now once they are in the castle, we're going to try not to fight right on the edge of the castle wall. We're going to fall back to give ourselves some more space where we can. The nearby giant Buddha statue was providing some pathfinding issues, so it wasn't all that easy. And another thing to consider is that we do have some elite infantry who are actually pretty good in melee, so we may not need to fall back, but I want to try and do it anyway. We want to ideally have our spear levy move in to lock the enemy down so they're stuck. Then our gun troops will just shoot through the gaps in the melee and such and try to inflict lots of damage. Here we see in the north everything sorted out, our cavalry have won their part of the battle, that frees up more troops to take part in this defence on the southern side, and things are going well. As the enemy move in, we give them space, it takes them a while to form up and they're all just wandering around trying to work out what to do, and as that's happening they're being shot to pieces at point blank range by our highly accurate infantry, and when they do reach our lines for a fight, we're not too bad either, and the rest of the unit can keep firing, meaning we're inflicting lots of damage and the enemy are just being cut down before our lines. We had a number of units that weren't engaged at all, so I sent them outside to clear up more enemies before they came into the castle, and multiple units were just annihilated by this attack, including their officers, and with them retreating, that's going to be a morale shock for the enemy, and it does cause a chain rout. Virtually everything inside the castle is routing or dead at this point, and actually our losses were quite minimal, so there is indeed a way to defend a very small fort. You just have to make sure you can use your guns to your best advantage and have units that you can sacrifice to lock the enemy down that is another vital feature so there we go a decisive victory much much cleaner
finer than Joss's previous defense of this area. We lost something like 500 men, the enemy losing over 4,000, and when you consider that our losses were including garrison losses and ones that will just be replenished because we're sitting in the castle, it may come down to virtually no losses at all, so that's all very good. At the start of the next turn, Charles is going to move out again, not satisfied with his recent conquests. I thought we might as well just keep going. My spy had already revealed there wasn't that much up here to stop us going further. I set a siege on the next Matsue castle, but local Yonago forces are reinforcing here, so we don't have an easy attack. I want to leave this place under siege then, to see if they'll come together into a field battle where it might be easier to manage, although that is a case where ambushing enemies as they reinforce would be viable, although we'd still have to make the castle assault in the end, which would then be pretty annoying. Joss moves out to defeat the survivors from the Sacho force, unremarkable but for the fact that we discovered a small Harado army hiding in the forest nearby, so they're going to die at the same time. There we go, we've cleared the enemy out of our territory, but our borders are still not safe. There are loads of Sacho troops just to the south who might attack, so we are going to still play things conservatively with Joss Artin's army and hang around ready to defend at a moment's notice. As for George Hook, however, he can actually continue his offensive we only needed to leave behind a couple of units to control public order in our recent conquest, so we'll keep going after the Harado. We besiege their next castle. We have a small advantage there, but we want to see if the enemy will sally anyway to give us an easier battle. Our spy takes a look behind them and sees there are no more enemy forces on the way, although we do spot the Nabushima clan. We're not at war with them, but if everything goes to plan, we soon will be. Going into the next turn, the Sacho advance an army towards us and then ask for peace, a quite mixed message there. It's good to know that they want peace, they think they're disadvantaged, but we can't take it even though it would be useful because of the rules of this campaign. And now we're going into another battle. Charles is attacked by the Matsui he was besieging and one of the two Yonago armies nearby will reinforce. The Matsue forces have upgraded morale, so they're going to be extra hard to get rid of, annoying, and the Yonago are bringing some Katana a samurai which could wreak havoc if things go wrong. We'll just have to play things carefully. I think the men are a little uncomfortable with the current ranking arrangements, father. I can't help but agree with them. This regiment is growing into a whole division with all the locals flocking in, and yet I remain a lieutenant. I hope you realize that I am asking my own captains to follow the orders of a lower rank. The further away I am from you, the less that's going to work. Seeing as you missed my previous birthday, I think it would be quite appropriate to commission me as a major. Simply send the delivery up the Northern Mountain Circuit and you'll find me. Although, with how quickly we march, I can't say where. Your lovely tutor has fallen for a local woman, by the way, so I had to leave him in Awami. Hard to blame him, isn't it? I hope all is well on your front. Why don't we meet up for a little sightseeing in Kyoto soon? The Matsue are the first to arrive and they form up to begin a line battle with our formation. You can see I'm using a double line formation here, trying to have additional troops behind the front line who will be able to shoot over the top at other targets. And as long as the enemy get close enough, this can be pretty effective. They can just keep their distance and render my second line completely useless. But in this case, they're not going to. Many of their troops came closer than they needed to be, perhaps for increased accuracy. And they also have some melee troops who charge forward and provide good targets. A few of these ninjas make it to our line, but they've been so depleted they won't be able to do much damage anymore. They also tried to throw their general against our front line. He had to go through some stakes, so lost some men to that, and then just routed once he actually made contact with our troops, and that's going to be the end of that. That will also demoralize his forces quite nicely. So now that line battle will just continue. We appear to be winning. The enemy's troop quality is inferior, so just shooting away should eventually net us the win. Meanwhile, the Yonago forces are now arriving, and they, as we saw, have melee troops, and quite a few of them. Their cavalry charge our front line, taking losses but making an impact, and then in come the Katana Samurai. These are the guys I'm worried about, because they might just destroy all of my infantry. However, since we have a double line, 
The second line will try and shoot these guys in the melee, it may inflict friendly fire damage, but it makes sure the samurai are constantly under the morale shock for being fired upon and makes them significantly easier to rout. Our dragoons are having some trouble off to the flank, where some Yari cavalry managed to catch up with them and we're just trying to escape since a melee there would be pretty bad for us. And there go those katana samurai, they did indeed rout quite quickly due to the constant fire coming down onto them, so our men are saved. And that's the hard part of the battle over really, now we just have to form up again and start shooting at the enemy's nearby ranged units who aren't particularly good. The Yariki did catch up with my dragoons, but by shooting at them from all directions at point blank range, we did bring them down, probably with some friendly fire there. Charles came over to help with that, but wasn't really needed. So we are left with just the line battle, and we do have the advantage, our double line formation still coming in useful as we just gun the enemy down, their troops were decimated and started to retreat soon enough. That's going to be a relatively easy victory with actually minimal strategy employed there. We didn't really do anything. Almost all of our men were just in the place where they were deployed and shot enough stuff to win the battle for us. I was checking the results here, wanted to see if the conscripts had performed well as I suspected, although it was actually the sepoys that carried this battle, the Indian troops, they did particularly well for whatever reason. Now in we go, capturing the castle we had under siege and the nearby Yonago forces fall back. So a complete victory there. The Matsuyama forces that snuck past us are caught by some of my reinforcement units just hanging around at the back. Not actually the best balance bar there, but we'll just take it just to avoid the hassle of fighting that engagement, although some of them survive so we'll still have to chase them down. A detachment from John Alcock's army now goes to the south to get rid of this very minimally garrisoned Matsuyama settlement, only three units so we'll just quickly auto resolve them away and then vassalize it. That means we can bring those troops right back to rejoin the main force and have our position very thoroughly defended, with now one fewer direction to worry about as well. Now over in Kyushu, it looks like the Sacho are planning something, one of their armies is on the way over with a load of wooden cannons apparently, and we're just going to hold the bridge in front of them using Jos Arten. It's very unlikely they'll be able to get across there since their troops are inferior, so I was happy to just leave that, but they actually walked past us again. They're going for the eastern side of the island it seems, so pretty annoying. We do need to advance our defensive line because we don't actually have the enemy choke pointed at all there. Now Charles can actually just continue his advance, the locals weren't very uppity so he didn't need to wait around to control public order. So I'm going to go after the next Matsue settlement, it didn't have much in it so they just go right down. And that's also the last Matsue settlement so that's the end of that faction, a nice level up for Charles, he's getting particularly good. And we'll just occupy that, here we are choke pointing the enemy since they always have to go through our frontline position to get to us, at least up to this point on the map, so that's all safe. Now, I decided to send Jos Arten after this Sacho army rather than trying to be defensive here. We'll just attack it and then move back and try to get to a more effective defensive position. We have an advantage here because our troops are just better in every way than the enemies, but I still wanted to fight this rather than auto resolve because I think it's going to go particularly well if we fight it out manually and leave us in a perfect condition to carry on. The issue as the battle starts will of course be that they do have all those wooden cannons, so they can fire at us as we advance and inflict a few casualties, they've got enough of them that they can put some pretty heavy fire on a couple of my units, and I believe the AI gets a bonus to its accuracy as well because we're playing on hard difficulty which makes the wooden cannons a bit less useless. So we do take losses but they've deployed all of their cannons in front of their army and their army actually fell back as we advanced making that situation even worse. So we just moved up and fired upon the cannon crews and that's going to remove that threat from this battle. There were more cannons on the enemy's right flank but over here we've got Royal Engineers, a light infantry unit that has much better range than regular line infantry so we can stand very far away from the enemy and not only destroy their cannon crews but start sniping away at their main line and they can't fire back. We can use this to try and draw the enemy out of the cover they've built for themselves and down from the hill so that we don't have to make a disadvantageous assault and if we use this correctly we're likely to do a lot of damage to the enemy because individual enemy units get drawn forwards to try and retaliate one at a time. So now it's time for a long shooting match to see what we can do.
Charles, I want you to stop with your reckless, hot-headed idiocy. I order you to stay put. I certainly appreciate the work you have done, and I will not take your achievements away from you. However, even success requires a certain measure of skill to deal with properly. You simply don't know what you don't know. That is the crux of it. I will not grant you two promotions at once, as you have so humbly requested. I may commission you as captain for your next birthday if you manage to follow my orders until then. Your men will be led by Lieutenant Colonel Cartwright. You must remember him, Dorian from Upwater House. He shall arrive shortly with reinforcements, and you are to give him your men as well. I know you understand this, and I know you will be angry at the notion, but it is quite important for you to learn that this campaign is not all about you. It was in this battle that I realized that Neil Fire doesn't just allow the first two ranks to fire like it normally does in this game. I guess the mod allows more ranks to fire on top of that, and it's making our lines super, super effective. We are absolutely bombarding the enemy with three or four ranks of fire at once from highly trained troops, and many of them have superior modern rifles that breach load, so they shoot really quickly, meaning the enemy just don't stand a chance. We're absolutely blasting the enemy and while some of them occasionally manage to fire back most of their units usually dead by the time they've even raised their weapons so they're doing minimal damage to our side with that then we've achieved our objective we've brought the enemy down off the hill and destroyed them their army lost 10 men for every one lost on our side an absolute stomp and we even captured some of their wooden cannons got some surrendees here who are going to now join our army for what that's worth and it's worth very little a few troops survived there so i decided to send those wooden cannons after them as an experiment three wooden cannons versus a half crude wooden cannon unit and some levies that was an even engagement apparently so we're going to risk it and see what happens and we get a close victory capturing the other wooden cannons some of the levies escape again which i thought was against the rules but we'll just chase them down again and there we go this time the massive wooden cannon bombardment is going to allow us to win not sure if i'll actually keep those cannons around because they're not too useful but they're also pretty cheap as well so maybe i could use them as a garrison instead of military police now, George Hook gets the sally from the enemy that he was looking for. He has a big advantage there, so this time we'll just auto-resolve that. The enemy army's going right down. Unfortunately, though, we didn't actually defeat the whole enemy army there, so that siege does continue after that. At the start of the next turn, you can see I've researched Constitution. This is a very useful tech, one of the civil techs, because it gives us plus three public order everywhere, which is a massive boost. Public order's not really going to be a problem anymore after that. I have mostly been researching civil techs to get public order upgrades. Now we're going to switch to researching military techs so we can start working our way towards deploying some artillery, which so far we've gone completely without and really so have our enemies. John Alcock's going to lay siege to this Yonago settlement, an even setup, so we'll see if they sally there and try and get an easier battle. We've also now got the arrival of this guy, Dorian Cartwright, a new general bringing some reinforcements up behind Charles. He's been chasing him for a while and has finally caught up. However, our spying in the area here reveals that the enemy still don't really have much on offer. We can easily take even more territory and we can just about take one more region while still having a stable front line with everything choke pointed. So Charles is going to do just that, running away from Dorian in order to lay siege to hockey here it's got a full stack inside and apparently it even has an advantage over us lots of high quality samurai units in there so we'll leave the siege going and see what comes of that in the future now jumping back to george we have to auto resolve the harado again since they're still alive but that time it was super easy so in we go with that done we now border a new faction the nabashima who we looked at earlier so we'll have to jump into diplomacy and declare war on them according to our rules these guys are a bit more advanced than the factions we've fought so far i'm going to do some spying here to take a look and we find that they have loads of armies around the place but those armies also have some good units in them including parrot guns some proper artillery so that's going to be challenging to face they're also using ships that aren't just gunboats so that's going to be annoying we're going to have 
after up our naval game, which we haven't really focused on so far. We see a few specialist units like revolvers and sharpshooters, so some decent infantry to face as well. And of course, they're going to be swarming our new front line in the next episode. That is the end for now. Thank you very much for watching and very special thanks to the officially That is the end for now. Thank you very much for watching and special thanks to the officially Devon patrons. We'll see the first significant naval battle and a new blitz strategy from Jos Arton in the next episode of Honorable Gentlemen.